Yo from Coding Blocks here, back with another mini code adventure. Uh, this time we're going to be generating maze, and I'm using some of the tools that we used in uh, prior videos. So if you're not familiar with Yeoman or Node, then uh, you can skip back to one of those guys and uh, take a look. And uh, actually, this time I went ahead and ran everything, and you can look in the blog post for um, the exact commands I used to set up. But this takes a long time to run, as you know from prior videos, so I just wanted to go ahead and get it out of the way. So I also went ahead and installed two libraries. One is Maze.js, which I'll show you in a second here, and the other is Priority.js, which I actually think it, uh, might be a little blog. I'm going to take a look here because the the code in Maze.js will crash without it, and uh, some reason it's not bringing it in automatically when you install with Node. So I'm going to take a look at that. But in the meantime, here's a real simple Maze generator, just <laughs> exactly what it says it is. And the way it works is you basically just require it. You create a new backtracker, which is the actual object that does all the work. Give it a uh, width and a height. Generate your maze. You can set a starting and end point if you want. And you can actually uh, have the maze, um, the maze library will solve itself. We're going to skip that part. We're just going to do the drawing today. But I did want to show you, you have lots of options. I just did a little search here on NPM. And uh, I picked the one that just looked the simplest to me. But there's also different ways of doing it and different ways of solving mazes, and they're all just kind of cool, so you should take a look and have some fun. And I'm going to be borrowing heavily from the example here on Ernie HS's um, site, which is the author of the, uh, of the package. So um, that's kind of a cool reference, and we'll have a link down to that. And I already got the site up and running, so here we are. And the first thing I'm going to do is just wipe out everything. We don't need all that HTML stuff that came along thanks to Yeoman. All we need is a canvas. Give it ID for easy lookup. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a width and a height of 100%. You know, I have all sorts of fancy less and sass whatever stuff set up, and here I am doing it old school. Alright, so that's our canvas. You go over here. And I'm going to grab that canvas. Document. Oh, come on, no one saw it. IntelliSense. Nope. The ID was maze. Alright. And uh, if you're not familiar with canvas, we'll have some links to that too. But it's basically an HTML5 feature that uh, does some pretty cool stuff. Like drawing. Uh, actually, I want to get context. I'm not really crazy about the word context. I feel like it's really vague, but for us, it's just what we're going to be using to draw. So um, I'm almost tempted to just call it pen. And now I set pen dot fill style. Like that makes sense, right? Um, I guess I'm just going to be boring and do something close to black. All right. I'm also going to set a size here, which is the size of the, the walls and halls, if you will. Um, the example you use four. Let's do three just for fun. All right. And let's see. Now I want to create the new. Um, well, actually, I need to require my library first. Maze JS. If you look at the, the example here, it actually uh, uses the word maze, but I think that might be a bug. I think that might have been renamed, maybe maze was taken, I don't know. But uh, maze.js is actually the proper package name, so that's what we're going to use. And I'm actually going to uh, create a new object here. This is going to be the thing that does the actual work. It takes width and height. I'm going to divide by my size, size of the halls and walls, because this is actually uh, well, what we want to pass here is the size of the, the matrix, basically. <coughs> All right, and m.generate. There we go. We have a maze now. We just can't see it. So let's go ahead and draw it. No less than m has a width and height. And I should apologize for even using 
the variable m. That's what was an example, but it, it hurts. But I also couldn't think of anything better to, <laughs> to name it. Uh, so, whatever, it's like 10 lines of code, we'll, we'll survive. I did it wrong. So, the rows deal with height, and the columns with the width. Alright, so now we're looping through every cell in our maze, and what I want to do is basically if my maze dot get, uh, let me take a look at my notes, it's row first, get row, get column. If that's true, then it's a wall. So I'm going to tell my pen to fill in a rectangle starting at row times size and call times size. Nope, backwards. Sorry, takes column first and then row. It definitely gets confusing, but uh, you'll know real quick if you mess it up. Uh, next arguments are the actual width and height. We're just basically just doing a little square there dunk, for the wall. And that's it. So if I type this all correctly, then this is just going to be awesome. It didn't refresh. Uh, the live reload isn't working for some reason, so uh, I'm not going to spend any time with that right now. Let's just go ahead and do it the old-fashioned way. Alright, we've got a bug. Exciting. Unexpected token, line 31. Line 31? <laughs> Var. Look at that. I like compiled languages. Only one? Yeah, right. We'll see. Oh, uh, actually, that did all right. So there we go. We just made a little maze generator. So that's pretty cool. That's uh, everything I wanted to show. Uh, yeah, awesome. So okay, so um, that's it for this uh, mini code adventure. We'll have some links and, and some other uh, description here and a blog post about other stuff you can do. That's kind of neat and take this thing to the next level. But uh, hope you enjoyed. See you.